down to what you need to have for your pest. Okay, so we've stripped off all the packaging and actually just focused on what you need. So the first system we're going to look at on your PowerPoint is um, slide 100, which is the digestive system. So we finished off the lymphatic system last week and we're going to go on to, and that's slide 100, digestive system. Okay, right, so the digestive system is also known as the ultimary canal, uh, which consists of the mouth, the larynx, which is the throat, the esophagus, which is your gullet, stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine. So these key points is important. You will need, you will be asked at some point in your anatomy and physiology test to name all or some of the digestive system. Okay, which is all these here. As we know, I'm going on to the next slide, uh, the digestive system starts in the throat. Once we've chewed, once we've chewed, gone into the mouth and we've chewed up our food, we start to digest. Now, I just want to make this a little bit bigger so you can follow with me. Okay, right. So this diagram, again, you won't, pro you may have to label this. You wouldn't probably have to label all of that in detail, but you may have to say a few things. So we've got the upper digestive system, the middle digestive system, and the lower digestive system. Again, you need to pay attention to your um, question. What is it up? it will probably say, name me three things from the upper digestive system. So it's no point telling me the large intestine, the small intestine, that's the lower. Yeah, so you have to be careful and look at the question. So the upper digestive system is the mouth and tongue, the esophagus um, and the larynx and the, I said the esophagus, yes. Yeah, so that's it. Mouth. Um, the larynx, the esophagus, um, and that's it for the upper digestive. For the middle digestive system, which will be the stomach, the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder, and the small intestine. Okay, so that's the middle. So that's the middle of your, your body. So you've got the upper, the head going down and leading down. To the middle of your body, um, which is your liver, liver stomach, stomach, pancreas, or blood, or small intestine, um, and that's it, and stomach. Then you've got the lower um, digestive system, which is the large intestine, small intestine, um, and again, it's labelling different parts of the large and small, but that's the only two. And then you've got the rectum, I think they may have. Yes, and the anus, okay, in which the food is then dispersed out of the body. You will need to learn this. You'll need to study it. You should know where all the things are, and you need to know what is part of it. The next slide that we're going to have a look at will tell us a little bit more. Oh, it's gone to it's great before I go into that. So, so if you notice, the slides are very much focused on what it consists of and where it is. Um, and that's mainly what the test is about. But as homework, I would advise that you ladies look into a little bit more. This is in your book, a little bit more of how the in the intestines work, how the stomach works, how the liver works. So just that it all becomes a little bit more focused in your mind. Okay? So just don't do what the PowerPoint said and look at what it's made of. I would research for myself, go away, research, and have a look at what is in the stomach. 
which would consist of stomach acid? How does it break down food? What is the importance of the liver? Because you may have a paragraph with an actual statement and you may have to say, is this true or false? Okay, so with the digestive system, yes, this PowerPoint has told you what's in it, where it is. I suggest that you do a little bit of research for yourself and find out what these other sections actually do. Okay, so that thumbs up for us all. Number two, I can see. Thumbs up, perfect. Okay, the excretory system. So it's another system. The excretory system removes waste products of metabolism from the cells, and this system includes in the skin, sweat, to excrete, remember, to get rid of, excretory system, to excrete. The lungs, it will be carbon dioxide, the large intestines is feces, and the kidneys, urine. So the excretory system is only made up of these four sections. Skin, where we sweat. Lungs, we expel carbon dioxide. Intestines, feces, and kidney urine. Again, that will be very important. These are all key points that you need to remember. So let's little have a little bit closer, because obviously you might have this lovely diagram, and they might ask you what's where and how. So kidneys filter blood. And that helps us to remove, so we remove waste out of the blood. It's then filtered down the urethra, the urethra, sorry, the urethra, to little tubes that lead down from the kidneys and lead into the urethra. From the urethra, it will then go be stored in the bladder, just slightly lower, and then obviously um, be expelled from the body. So kidneys, urethra, urethra, bladder, then it's expelled from the body. Urethra system um, is another system. This controls the fluid balance in the body, keeping hostasis stability in the body. Hostasis means to keep a balance of chemicals, to keep everything in balance within the body. Um, and, and this is consist of what we just looked at, the kidneys, urethra, the bladder, sorry, urethras, and urethra. Get those mixed up all the time. <laughs> they sound very similar, but they're two different functions or different parts of the system. So we'll have a closer look. So guys can have a look. So, again, okay, we looked at this just further. We've got the kidneys, the urethras, bladder, the penis. This is a man, obviously. Uh, urethra, the testes, and the prostate. Okay, and a gentleman. In a female... Oops, sorry. Come on to the wrong one. In a female, we've got the kidneys, the urethras, the fallopian tubes, bladder, the vagina, urethra, ovaries, and uterus. So we have to learn these. Yes? These are all part of the system, the urethral system, that we expel urine. Okay? Right. So, we've come out a few very quickly. Can you see the very small systems? Um, obviously, please make a list of any questions as I go through. I'm just going to make this smaller so that we can um, speak about them at the end if you're not sure. Because there was a very few. So we've just covered the digestive system, the, the excretory system. Yes? Urethral system is also part of the excretory system. So we've covered all that. Please make notes if you have to. But now I'm going to move on to the respiratory system. I still can't get used to 
um, lecturing. This is lecturing where I'm talking to you and you're left just listening. Um, and usually you would partake in the, the lesson. So when you hear me having that little break, it's because usually I'm waiting for you guys to say something. <laughs> so please excuse me, I will get used to it. Okay, the respiratory system. The cells of the body tissues require oxygen for metabolism. In addition to food and water, the respiratory system works with the circulatory system and the muscular system, enabling the exchange of gases between air, blood and cells. So going back to the beginning, all of our systems interlink. Yes? They don't, they just don't work by themselves and stand alone. Though they do different things, they interlink. Look how many systems we've brought up. We've brought up the muscular system. We're in the respiratory system. We've brought up blood, which we haven't covered yet, and cells. Yeah, so all our systems interlink. For us to build a house, we need the brick, we need the cement, we need the frame, we need wood, we need glass. They all join up to make this house. Okay, so let's go along with our respiratory system. The respiratory system consists, so again, it's important that you know what it's made of, the nose, which is starting of our respiratory system, the pharynx, which is the nose, the larynx, which is the voice box, the trachea, trachea, sorry, which is the windpipe, bronchi, broncholes, Aveoli, even guys, aveoli, lungs, um, muscles, or respiration, respiration, which is the intercostal muscles, and the diaphragm, which is in the lungs that helps the chest to go up and down the diaphragm to lift the lungs and deflate the lungs. Okay, so. Nose, larynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, broncholes, alveoli, lungs, the intercostal muscle, the diaphragm, alveoli. There you go. Right. Um, we are then now going to look at the endocrine system. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do the endocrine system yet. I think I'm going to go on to the um, nervous system, which is 32. I'm going to do endocrine system by itself, so it's quite a big system. Again, respiratory system. So I mentioned some words here. Half of them I couldn't say. I feel like. <laughs> okay. I want you, as your homework, to go and look into this a little further. Yes? As it there, it takes air, oxygen in, it has a good hair that will prevent um, dirt and debris from going down into the lungs. But I want you to look at this a little bit further. It is in your book. Um, what are alveoli? Yes? What does the lungs do? Where are they positioned? Why, Why do they, do they have, have alveoli or broncholes or bronchi in them? These are all part of the lungs. So I would like you to look at these a little bit further and just give yourself an idea what are they. There's no point in me saying you both need to know the alveoli and you don't know what alveoli is. Okay? So these is very important as well as knowing where they are because these will come up in the test it's very important for you to know where they are but what to do so at the beginning of our next session i might say who can say abiola i might get you to talk at the end and tell me what is abiola where is it found what do the lungs do what is my larynx yes just to make sure you understand. Also, do this with your digestive system. So I've made a note to myself to question you, to have a look. Because once you do these tests, you won't know. It will just say, oh, I didn't know I had to know what they do. Okay? Right, so we're going back to slide number 32. Um, because we are going to look at the nervous system. Give me a minute. 
Um, I've got some people that are muted, um, but they're muted, they've also taken the camera off. Yeah. Can you put the camera back on? Because I like to see your faces. I like to see if you're understanding, I like to see your smile. Now, I read by what your eyes and what your face is saying, whether you understand what I say. Yeah, yeah, so, so I, can't I can't say that, that to a blank like screen. <laughs> so please, I don't mind the meeting, but um, I'd like to see your beautiful faces this morning so I can make sure that you are understanding. So, you ladies, you, uh, I know you had, um, you were on mute. You know that I'd like you to go and have a look at the digestive system and tell me um, what X each person bit does and the respiratory system because I'm going to ask about it. Okay, my little half an hour at the end. So we're going to start at 32, slide 32. I've done that. It's not that. It's the nervous system, so slide 33. I think I may have some problem with my nervous system today because I can't get the words out. <laughs> so there might be a little disruption there. So the nervous system is a vast and it's very complex. What it does, it transmits messages between the brain and the other parts of the body. It controls everything that the body does with the endocrine system. So again, we're interlinking. The nervous system is made up of a network of cells called neurons. They transmit messages to and from the central nervous system in the form of impulses. The neuron system has two main divisions. The central nervous system, also may be found in your book as CNS, and the auto, max auto neurotic nervous system. Okay, so two different systems. So the central nervous system, ENS, is composed of the brain, okay, so that's a hard drive, and the spinal cord. The brain is protected um, by being surrounded by the bones of the cranium. The spinal cord is protected by passing through the bones of the vertebrae, which is in the spinal column. So you can see that these two... Um, structures are very important, yes? Because if we've got um, valuable jewels and we lock it away in a safe, that's going to be valuable. If they're only from Primark, we'll just put them on our dressing table. Won't we? <laughs> they're lost, they're lost. <laughs> we can go back to my Primark and get them in two pounds again. But if they are valuable and they mean something to us, we're going to lock them away and keep them safe. And that's the same thing we're doing with the brain. And that's the same thing that we're doing with the um, spinal cord. If we damage our spinal cord, we can be paralyzed. Yes? So if we sever the, the spinal cord, we can be paralyzed. If we damage our brain, we can also be paralyzed. We can be something called brain dead. Yes? We won't survive because they have to use external things to do everything the brain was going to do. And you can't do that forever. So these are very important. The brain is composed of several parts. Now, the brain, um, we do need to cover. We need to cover the brain in um, level three, not so much level two. But again, I think it's very important as level two students that are going to go on to level three, that you do need to know the brain. Um, I'm saying this because um, I'm going to you know what I always say to you, that we've got weeds and flowers, okay? The flowers we want to keep because they're important. The weeds, we, they put them there, but we don't want to know. Well, this, that, 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 that section of the brain is a wild flower. Have you heard of the wild flowers? Wild flowers are really weeds, but they're pretty, so we keep them. Okay, so that's what we, so I'm not really going to go too much into the brain, 
but it, it, it is quite important. We don't use it as such, and you don't, they don't actually ask you to um, label it part of the brain, etc. but it's still important to know. So it's a wild flower. Okay, another system. Let's do our little picture a little bit bigger. As we spoke about, nervous system consists of the brain, the spinal cord, and then the nerves branching off from the spinal cord. Okay, so that's three things that you do need to learn. Right. Automatic nervous, nervous system. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. This controls, as it says, automatic, the involuntary activities of smooth muscle and cardiac muscles and glands. Involuntary, automatic. It means that we have no control over them. Yes, the nervous system has the control, so we can't control them. It will regulate the size of the pupils. Can you, can you make your eye, your pupils get bigger? Subconsciously, no. What he does it. It will regulate vasodilation. Vasodilation is the opening of blood cells. Vasoconstriction is the closing of blood cells. We can't do that. The body system does it automatically. It will regulate a heart rate. We can't regulate a heart rate. Yes, that's with the body. It will also regulate the movements of the gut. Yes? So the gut is in our small and large intestine. Obviously, when we eat and it's come through the stomach and it's gone into the small intestine, the large intestine, if we didn't have muscles and we didn't have a nervous system, the food would just sit there. So it'll open and move. Open and move open and move so that the food can move along the small intestine move along the large intestine and then we will excrete it okay it divides into two sections and many organs receive a supply from each division fibers from one division stimulate the organ while fibers from the other division inhibit or slows down or even stops. Sympathetic division stimulates in periods of stress or danger. It prepares the body for physical activity in case of fighting or um, escape becomes necessary. Have we heard of fight or flight? Anybody? Put a thumb up if you have. Yes? Right. Fight or flight. So, this is the part of the system that prepares us for fighting. So it gives us, you know, somebody said, I've had, I don't know where I got, I had this car accident and my child got knocked down and it was under this, this car. Superhuman strength, I could lift the car up. Yes, and I could just bring my, my child out. I don't know where it came from, but I got this superhuman strength. Or I was going to be attacked. Somebody came into my home and attacked me. And all of a sudden, I got the strength to bite off this six foot, 11 stone, 12 stone man. Don't know where I got it from, but it came. Yes? And that is that part of our nervous system. Or it could say, this man is breaking into my house. And usually, I don't know, I decide I'm going to jump out of that window and to escape. So it will enable us to fight or escape if it will only come and be stimulated when we're under stress or we're under danger. Yes, there is hormone, adrenaline, that will also help us to do fight or flight. But that's the nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system stimulates um, in times of relaxation. So you've got one that stimulates when we're stressed and one when we're relaxed. Um, it's fibers of this division stimulate digestion and the absorption of food. 
So remember, I've spoken about the large intestine and small intestine, the parasympathetic um, division of the nervous system. Moves the food along. Okay, so you may have a paragraph saying what is stimulated during relaxation and move and aids in digestion. Yeah, that's all they give you in the test. And you will have to decide which one it is. Okay, so that's why it's important that you need to go and read up, or we've got it here. You need to know what each thing does. Okay. Right. Nerves. There are two types of nerve. I think that's just making your PowerPoint box. Let me just close this up. There we go. Okay. Right. So two types of nerve. Both are composed of white fibers and they're enclosed in a sheath. Do we understand what a sheath is? A sheath is like a covering. Yeah, a white covering to hold bundles of things together. So we've got sensory nerves. These receive information and then relay it to the brain. They are found near the skin surface and respond to touch, pressure, temperature, and pain. Uh, when we look at the skin, we will see those sensory nerve endings. So that is the things that makes us aware of our environment. Touch, pressure, temperature, pain. So okay. if I was a baby and I'm learning to, to walk and I'm touching things and I touch the fire, it's hot, that hurts, yeah? It may take me two or three times, but it eventually it will register to me, but that's hurt and I can't touch that, okay? Because it's making me aware. And you've got motor nerves. These are situated in the muscular tissue and act on information received from the brain causing a particular response, typically muscle movement. Okay, so these are in the muscle tissue and they, they send information up to the brain so that we can move our muscles, so that we can actually move our body. Okay, then you've got the cranial nerves. Okay. okay, so the, the main cranial nerves, nerves of concern in beauty therapists are the 5th, the 7th, and the 11th. The 5th cranial nerve, or the trigonal nerve, the 7th cranial nerve, or the facial nerve, or the 11th, um, sorry, and the 11th nerve, or the accessory nerve. Okay, so as therapists, so that means it's in bold as well. Is that a flower on a weed? That's definitely a flower. We need, we need to know, to know that. that. Okay? okay. We also, we also need, need to know, know where they are. are. But I'll, I'll show you that in a second. So um, the fifth cranial nerve is um, serves the tear glands of the eye, the skin of the forehead, and upper cheeks. So that's where it works, the cranial nerves. The maxillary nerve serves the upper jaw and mouth. Mandibular nerve serves the lower jaw, muscle, teeth, and muscles involved in chewing. Okay, maxillary, mandibular, yes, yeah? those are all the bones and the muscles. So remember, as I said, if you learn your muscles, this all becomes very simple. Right, so where are they in the body? And here they are, which you need to learn. You need to look at, and you need to learn where each, that's the fifth brain, uh, which is important to us because we work on all the nerves. So around the eye, maxilla is the top, mandibula is the bottom. The seventh cranial nerve, or the facial nerve, has five branches. The temporal, zygomatic, uh, zygomatic, sorry, mandibular, 
and the servant. The temporal nerve serves the apicularis popeye and the frontalis muscles. So guys, if you've not learned the muscles, this will mean nothing to you. Okay, so we must learn the muscles. I will show you where they are. There. Zygomatic nerve serves the eye muscles. The buccal nerve serves the upper lip and the sides of the nose. Mandibular serves the lower lip, mentalis muscle of the chin. And the clavicle nerve serves the platysma and the muscles of the neck. Here they are. Okay. So again, you might have a lady like this. And they might, you might have to say, A is the temporal, B is the psychomatical, so they ask you to label them. What is A, what is B, what is C? So you need to know where they're actually positioned. Then you've got the 11th cranial nerve or the accessory nerve. He serves the sternomastoid and trapezius muscles of the neck and moves the head and shoulders. Okay, so they're all in the neck here. Right, so th that was the nervous system. The next system that we're looking at, um, the olfactory system, why I added that in is also connected with the nervous system. Um, I think I've actually in the test seen it mentioned one or twice, once or twice, so I think it's important that we do cover it. So the first cranial nerve is also called the olfactory nerve. The central nerve that gives us the sense of smell. From the olfactory lobes, nerve fibers run into the olfactory center of the cere cerebral cortex along the olfactory tra uh, track. In the olfactory center, the impulses are interpreted into senses of smell. Smell may influence the behavior of a person. Pheromones are scents given off by animals, including us humans, to encourage sexual attention. They may be responsible for male and female attraction and male and female acts of aggression. Okay, so smell is very important. Yes? Ever, ever thought of something's happened to you and that smells come back to you and it all, almost makes you feel sick because you were sick at that time. I remember that when, when one of my pregnancies, I had um, avocados. I loved avocados, but when I was pregnant, I just couldn't. It couldn't. It just made me feel sick. And um, there was a shop that used to do pâtés. And every time I smell pâté now, I feel physically sick. Okay, so that's my sense of smell. So it can actually affect how we act. Hormones. Yes, yes. Um, um, is what attracts attract you to you. your mate. Believe it or not, everybody has a smell. Okay. Um, and we, we actually do smell that smell. Back in the day, before we decide we're going to put deodorant on, and perfume, and hairspray, and everything else, that is um, the smell that the male could smell on the female is if she was able to reproduce. Yes, so we have that certain smell about us and it attracts our mate. Again, with the jumper and the old boyfriend, yes, I don't know if it's happened. He's broken up, he's left the jumper, you and you smell it and you remember it. Yes, because we all have our own smells and that's the attraction. Right, foods have a pleasant aroma for us to enjoy, most of them. <laughs> okay, not all of them. But it has a pleasant aroma because otherwise we wouldn't enjoy our food and then we wouldn't eat, would we? So it must have a, a pleasant aroma. Joined on to the olfactory system is the limbic system. Limbic. limbic system is involved in emotions such as pain, pleasure, anger, fear, sorrow, sexual feelings, and affection. 
can you see why I'm going on to that straight away? Because it ties in with your olfactory system. Yes? So if we go back to the olfactory system, it says smells influence the behavior of the person. Yes? It can even make you feel affectionate or even aggressive towards that person. And that's a lymphatic system. Okay. okay, it consists of group, a group of structures that circle the brain stem. It also plays a part in memory and behavior. Um, for example, you know when you cut the lawn and you smell that lawn smell where it's been cut and it always takes you back to a game where you have, you're really happy and you're sitting on, on the park with the leather and you remember that smell of cutting the book. Yeah? yeah. Baby, baby powder. powder. We, we smell baby, baby powder. powder. Not so often used these days. Or baby lotion. It may take you back to when you had your children. Or when you was a baby. And the babies mm -hmm. have a lovely smell. I love smelling babies. <laughs> it just, it associates, we associate it with something pleasurable or something unpleasurable. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, and it will, we will behave in that way. Right, aromatherapy takes advantage of the lymphatic response using flexible um, aromas of essential oils to produce a range of responses, such as, such as relaxation and well-being. So of course, aromatherapy massage is part of our um, therapy, but um, not everybody does aromatherapy. But if we want our clients, say we're doing body massage and we want our clients or facial, yes, let's do facial because most of us just do facial. We want the client to relax. We can use the lymphatic system or using essential oil, yes, such as lavender to make that client feel relaxed. And these are all connected if we go all the way back to where we started, to our nervous system, they're all connected. We have three different systems that are really all connected to our nervous system. Right, how we do? Oh, we're doing very well. Hi, I just want to show a lovely little picture of our olfactory system. Okay. Um. Again, I think this is a wildflower, ladies, okay? I don't think they'll be asking you to actually label, but I think it's very good for you to know. But I think it will be mentioned in your test because it's part of the nervous system. Okay, but this is like a wildflower. So it's not a weed, but it's not a flower, but it's like a wildflower that we like to have and we like to put into position. Let's have a look. Oh, perfect. Right. I think we're doing so well that I'm going to move us onto one more system, which is the endocrine system. And the reason we do that much, actually, I'm going to give us blood. blood. It will tie in nicely. Do blood. And blood is um, 81 on your side, if you're writing to go back um, and have a look afterwards. Um, or 82, actually. 82. Muscular um, yeah, 82. Okay, let's make that smaller. Have a look at it properly. Okay, so function the blood. What are functions of blood? Blood circulates through the blood vessels, arteries, capillaries, and veins. 
collecting oxygen from the lungs and then diverting them into the cells of the body. Glucose is also carried in the blood, which is used um, by cells together with oxygen to supply us with energy. So as anybody, you know, when you think, oh gosh, I'm really, really tired, really, really feeling flat, and you go and get yourself a sweet or a fizzy drink or something sweet, it just gives you that lovely boost. Yes? So it supplies us with energy. Blood supplies other raw materials to build or maintain cells or to manufacture products uh, such as secretion. Inside the tissue, some fluid leaks from the capillaries as blood um, passes through them. When the fluid leaves the capillaries to enter the tissue, uh, sorry, tissue, it becomes tissue fluid. The capillaries are the smallest um, vessels in the, the blood. Their, their structure is about like one, one centimeter thick. Yes, very thin. They're very easily broken. Um, you can see them on the skin, on the face. You know, sometimes you get broken capillaries, um, little red veins. It's because they can even be broken by spicy food, by heat or cold. They're very, very small. So that's why things can actually pass. So they're semi permeable. Things can actually pass through them. Um, and go into the vessels, and this is called tissue fluid. Tissue fluid can be seen when we have um, edema. You know the puffy eyes? Yes, just underneath the eyes. So we have edema, so we have puffy eyes. Okay, so the main constitution of blood is plasma, red blood cells or erythrocytes, white blood cells or leukocytes, platelets, which are called thrombocytes, and other chemicals, for example, hormones. Big flower here, guys. Every test talking about blood will ask you, what is blood made of? Now we've put the both names, so in case they say, what are erythrocytes? Erythrocytes are red blood cells. Yes? So you've got erythrocytes, leukocytes, thrombocytes, Erythrocytes are red blood cells, leukocytes are white blood cells, platelets are thrombocytes. And then you have other things within the blood system. So circulation, how do we get blood around the body? The heart is the muscular organ that pumps blood around the body. Okay, so the heart is responsible for pumping all blood around the body. Then you have arteries. Blood leaves the heart into the large plastic tubes called the uh, carotid artery. The blood to the head arrives via the arteries, one on either side of the neck. And these arteries are called the internal and external carotid and carotid artery, look like artery. Okay. So heart, from the heart, pumping down. It then leaves the heart and goes into an artery. If you cut an artery, because it's so near to the heart, it doesn't just bleed. You know, when we cut ourselves and it just bleeds out, it spurts out like that and pumps and spurts. That's because it's still so close to the heart that it's still being pumped. Okay. Right. Okay. The external clotted artery um, divides into three branches. This goes to the occipital, the temporal, and the facial branch. So occipital um, supplies the back of the head and the scalp. The temporal branch supplies the side of the face, head and scalp, and the skin. And the facial branch, branch supplies muscles and tissues of the face. I just want to go back to the heart um, only because they didn't go into a lot of detail about it. So 
for us, for the heart to carry um, oxygen around the body, it needs to have oxygen in it. So what happens is the heart pumps the blood around the body, which is carrying oxygen. So we'll think of the blood as postmen. Okay, it's got oxygen in there. So it's got its post and it stops off and posts all its letters around the body. Then it heads back, so it comes out one side of the body, down, posts its letters, down to our feet, back up our feet, and back up the other side and into the heart. Goes through. Once it's in the heart and it's posted all its letters, it needs to get more letters, it needs to get oxygen. So what happens is leave the heart, goes up into the lungs, picks up oxygen, yes, and drops off the waste products, carbon dioxide, comes back into the heart and starts its post trip all over again. What I want you to do is have a closer look at the circulatory system of the heart. I want you to understand the heart. If you see a picture of the heart or any picture, let's say, for example, here we go, blood supply of the head. When it is showing red, it has deoxygenated blood. There's no oxygen in it. When it shows blue, yes, it has oxygen. Okay. And that will be the same for the skin. I don't know if you remember the diagram of the skin, which I am going to slide up to, because I've read this and I thought it's not giving you enough explanation. I'm just going to show you a picture of the skin. And you will always have red blood is deoxygenated. There's no oxygen. Blue is oxygenated blood. So again, another one of your homework is to have a look at the heart, again, that's in your book. It's a nice diagram, actually, showing what side deoxygenated blood enters the heart and what side does oxygenated heart uh, blood. Right, bear with me. And it's in the, uh -huh, here we go. Right, so can you see at the bottom of that diagram, blood supply, blue. Blood supply from the heart. So remember the heart is the post room. It's already picked up, and do you see what color it is? Blue. It's picked up oxygen, okay? So it's gone to the lungs, gone back into the heart, and now it's gone to the body. The red one on the other side is coming from the body. It's deoxygenated. It's emptied all its oxygen into the body and is coming back to the heart to get more oxygen. And that's the simplest way that to, to describe it. That's, that's, you know, that's it to a T. But what I want you to see uh, is deoxygenated blood is red, usually in our diagrams. Oxygenated blood is blue. So, do you remember all our royals have blue blood, they said, or our posh people? That means they've got lots of deox, they've got lots of oxygenated blood. Yes, no deoxygenated. Okay, perfect. So, I just wanted to go back uh, and just explain that. But please have a look at your heart. Yes, yeah? so what are we looking at? We're looking at the heart for homework. So, we'll write it down so I've got it. The heart, I'm looking at the digestive system, because I'm going to ask you questions, and the reproductive, uh, the not reproductive, the respiratory system. Okay, then I want you to look at, yeah, that was in the digestive system. I want you to have a look in detail because there wasn't much here. So could you look at those three? We will, at the end, you know, when we have questions, I will question you a little bit more and try and fill in the gaps for you uh, where they're needed. Okay? You got away with not having homework for a little while, haven't you? <laughs>
<laughs> right, so we're going back to um, blood, which is from 82 to 90. So let me just get this. And um, it's nice to go online, it's nice to look, but also use your beauty books, yeah? And then we're, we're sort of um, on the same circulatory, yes. Perfect. Uh, right, we just spoke about this. Okay, so it's red. Is it deoxygenated or oxygenated? Deoxygenated. Well, I can see you mouthing. <laughs> okay. Deoxygenated blood. That means it's come from the body and it's gone up to the head. And it's just showing you all the ones that I just spoke about. Yes, the artery. Um, the facial branch, the temple branch, exactly where they are. You need to learn that to know a typical at the back of the head and know where they are. This one is blue, so it actually has oxygen, so oxygenated blood, and again, where they are. Okay? Perfect. Right. Um, also, it shows the blood supply to and from the hand, okay, which we do need to know. We did cover very briefly. The veins of the hands and arms, guys, to just know where they are, be aware. That's a lovely blue colour. So I say, I think we've got what kind of blood? Oxygenated blood. Um, and then we also got where you need to learn arteries of the foot and lower leg. Now it's coming, come, so it comes from the heart down to your feet, remember. So this is going up, so oxygen in it, so you notice it's red. Okay, um, we need to know where these are. Okay, so that's part of the homework. And then we've got the veins. Lovely. That's coming down. Why is it coming down? Because it's blue. Oxygenated blood. Yes. And where they're going. That's a bit tiny, isn't it? Let me make it a bit bigger for you. You do have access to this PowerPoint. But you will need to learn these. And it's not like we just saying them out to you. Because you have to learn them. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Right, we've done the lymphatic system. Excellent. Right, so ladies, that's what we covered today. And that's, uh, we covered a lot of systems. We looked at the digestive system. Please look at that for your homework. The excret excretory system. We looked at the respiratory system, the olfactory system, the nervous system, the uratory system, lymphatic system, and blood. Um, that is most of our systems. We're carrying out one single system um, next week. Well, obviously, we'll start all over again <laughs> with this session. The uh, endocrine system. Okay, so with the endocrine system, which is, is quite a big system, um, and it takes quite a lot of um, detail. So we'll take a little time on that, and then. I would like, if possible, for us to go back over the heart with what you've learned. Yeah, so we're going to unmute for once. I want you to talk to me. And we're going to look at the digestory system to find out what you've done and that, and the respiratory system, if that's all good with you. Is there anybody that's got some questions about the systems that we've carried out today? No? Are we all good? And we're looking at our homework. We know what we're going to do next week. So, um, yeah, keep it on so I can see your lovely faces. So I don't get nervous and can't say my word. <laughs> okay. Um, and I will need you to sort of participate so we can um, look at those other systems. Are you quite happy to go with those systems and come back and then we can go through those systems together? Yeah, thumbs up if, it's, if we're all happy. Great, lovely. Sabrina, I think we're all done here. Um, okay, perfect. So 
Debbie, that was a lot of systems to go through. Really, yes. really good job. <laughs> that was good. And I think um, for the ladies, we've, we've covered quite a lot. Um, a really, a couple of really good analogies in there. We had our wildflower, our postman <laughs> analogy, which was good. And do you know what? It really does help to be able to remember these systems because, you know, yes, some of these things are going to be coming up on the um, when you go to do your theory. But you really want to make sure that the, this knowledge you have for your career going onwards, you don't want to just be revising just for the theory exam. This is knowledge that we really should know. So have fun with it. Um, I know Debbie's uh, given us some, some bits to revise over next week that we'll be discussing in next week's session. So, you know, when you're washing your face, think about the muscles that you're touching. Um, you know, make notes of the different uh, blood that you've got, the oxygenated and deoxygenated, because I know sometimes the colours we can get mixed up. And sometimes I know that it's funny, we always laugh because... Um, when I used to do revision, we used to put sticky notes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it helps you to it helps you get in the rhythm of revision and it helps you to, to have fun with it, basically. Um, so remember our analogies, our wildflower, our postman analogies, and um, you know, tying the circulation in or tying the systems together. Because I think that's what we really need to take away mm. from this session. Um, but we've covered a lot today and a very well done for De uh, to Debbie. So can we have a big thumbs up for Debbie? Well done today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank so, you. All right then, ladies. So I think we'll be, we will touch base again next week. And uh, happy reading in the meantime. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. Have a great Bye. rest of your week. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.